I'm going to deal with a series of sagittal sections of the body and concentrate mainly on the region of the thorax. This is the first section in the series of the sagittal sections and it is located to the left side of the body, most lateral part of the left side of the body. You can see here, these are the ribs. This is the first rib here. Note that it is located just beneath the clavicle. These are the structures that are related to the upper surface of the first rib. Subclavian vein anteriorly, and the subclavian artery posteriorly, and you can see the lower trunk of the brachial plexus as well here. Beneath the clavicle, the section goes into subclavius muscle and pectoralis major muscle. These are the other ribs, second, third, fourth, and so on. And in between the ribs, you can see the intercostal muscles. The inside of the wall of the thorax is lined with the parietal pleura, while the visceral pleura covers the lung. This is the left lung. It has only one fissure, the oblique fissure. You can see the obliquity of this fissure. This is the upper lobe of the left lung, and this is the lower lobe, the apex and the base of the lung. The section passes through the left ventricle of the heart. You can see the thickness of the ventricle, papillary muscles and trabeculae carni, and the heart is enclosed in the pericardium. This is the fibrous pericardium, and you can see here below that it fuses with the central tendon of the diaphragm. This is the dome of the diaphragm. In fact, this is the left dome of the diaphragm. You can see part of the liver, left lobe of the liver only. Here is the spleen and the stomach, which are mainly related to the left dome of the diaphragm. This is the next sagittal section. We are still in, on the left side of the body. First rib here subclavian vessels on its superior surface, clavicle, and these are costal cartilages here. Inside the lung, the left lung, the upper lobe and the lower lobe of the left lung, and the heart. Here you can see that um, part of the right ventricle is shown here, section into the right ventricle, trabeculae carni, and this is part of the right atrium. The atrioventricular orifice is here, guarded by the tricuspid valve, and behind these are the pulmonary veins that open into the left atrium. The outflow of the right ventricle is the infundibulum and the pulmonary trunk. This is the pulmonary trunk giving rise to the left pulmonary artery. And the heart is enclosed in the pericardium. The pericardium is also fused to the anterior thoracic wall by sternopericardial ligaments. And inferiorly, it fuses with the central tendon of the diaphragm. Posteriorly, you can see the posterior ends of the ribs, actually, this is the region of the tubercle of the rib where it articulates with the transverse processes of the vertebrae at the costo-transverse joints. You can see some of these costo-transverse joints. The bones are covered by hyaline cartilage. These are synovial joints. This section is almost a mid-sagittal section. So you can see here there is sternum and the sternum is showing the manubrium of the sternum, the body of the sternum, and the xiphoid process. The xiphoid process is cartilaginous. The manubrium articulates with the body of the sternum at the manubrio-sternal joint, which is a secondary cartilaginous joint, and you can see here the articular cartilage. And the body of the sternum, which should be in one piece, you can notice here that it is in multiple pieces because this is a young subject and these pieces which are called sternobri have not fused yet. 
behind the sternum, you can see the heart. Uh, this is the region of an atrioventricular orifice, right atrium here, and this is the region of the left atrium. In the mediastinum, the most posterior structure here is a muscular tube, that is the esophagus. You can follow the esophagus down and up, goes up. And in front of the esophagus is the trachea. Notice the rings of cartilages, the C-shaped rings of cartilages of the trachea. This is the site where the trachea bifurcates. You can see that it is level with the manubrio-sternal joint and it is at the lower border of the fourth thoracic vertebra. Just behind the manubrium of the sternum, this part of the mediastinum here contains the thymus and some fatty tissue, which is located in the front of the veins and the vessels, uh, just behind the manubrium of the sternum. The thoracic vertebrae, the bodies of thoracic vertebrae, and in between them are the intervertebral discs, are shown here as well. And this is the vertebral canal containing the spinal cord, and behind you can see the spinous processes. I want you to notice the differences in the obliquity of these spinous processes. You can see that they are almost horizontal in the upper four thoracic vertebrae, and then they will become almost vertical in the middle four, and then they become more horizontal in the lower four thoracic vertebrae. So there are different obliquities of these spinous processes. This section is off the midline toward the right side of the body. So you cannot see any more sternum. You, now you are going to see the um, costal cartilages here and um, the, the only part of the heart, the only chamber of the heart that is remaining here is the right atrium. Uh, you can see that the right atrium receives the inferior vena cava that passes through the central tendon of the diaphragm. This is the inferior vena cava in the abdomen, goes through the liver, see, through the liver and then passes through the central tendon of the diaphragm and immediately opens into the right atrium. Here is the right lung, and you can see the oblique fissure here of the right lung, separating the upper lobe and the lower lobe of the right lung. This section is to the right side of the body, sagittal section, and uh, again, you can see here the first rib, the relations of the superior surface of the first rib, subclavian vein and subclavian artery. And here, the lung, the right lung, um, showing the oblique fissure and the horizontal fissure. So uh, this is the upper lobe, middle lobe, and the lower lobe of the right lung. You can clearly see here that the lower lobe is not only inferior, but it is in fact posterior to the upper lobe, and that the upper lobe is not only superior, but also anterior to the lower lobe. And this is because of the obliquity of the oblique fissure, while here the uh, horizontal fissure or the, uh, of the lung, transverse fissure of the lung, is separating the upper lobe from the middle lobe. A piece of pericardium is remaining here. And this is the right dome of the diaphragm. Just beneath it is the bulk of the liver. Here we are on the right side. And this is what makes the right lung shorter than the left lung because the right dome of the diaphragm is higher than the left dome of the diaphragm because of the bulk of the liver. This is the most lateral of the sections, of the sagittal sections. Uh, you can see here the clavicle, the first rib here, the scapula with its spine, 
supraspinous and infraspinous fossae. These are the remaining ribs below the first rib. The upper surface of the first rib is related to the subclavian vein anteriorly, subclavian artery posteriorly, in addition to the lower trunk of the brachial plexus. These are the ribs here, and attached to the ribs anteriorly, this is the pectoralis major muscle. The right dome of the diaphragm, beneath it is the liver, and only piece of the right lung is remaining in this section. But this piece of the right lung is clearly showing the oblique fissure and the horizontal fissure separating the horizontal fissure separating between the upper lobe and the middle lobe and the oblique fissure uh, uh, bordering the or separating the lower lobe of the lung from both the uh, upper and the middle lobes.